ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اما بعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم. وقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تابعا لما جئت به أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق مولانا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد والشكر لله رب العالمين. Other ulama, respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, all greatest belong to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His most choicest and perfect salutation, salawat and salam upon the pinnacle of creation, Allah's masterpiece, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah include in these salutations the Qatar of the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa taslim, the galaxy of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, Tab'at Tabi'een, all our pious predecessors, Allah make us like these individuals, raise us in their company on the day of Qiyamah, <coughs> and enter us into the gardens of Eden without trial, reckoning, hisab, and kitab. Ameen, Ya Rabb al The Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the current Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it seems waits for every and any opportunity to engage in some sort of a discussion, futile as it might be, to get involved into those things which are debates, <coughs> unnecessary debates. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually said, Min husni Islam al Mal'i Tarkuhu Malayani, it's actually from the beauty of a man's Islam that he leaves out those things which are not necessarily applicable to him. They don't bother you, they're not with regard to you, but unfortunately, we've become such a people where it seems that if anything is happening, whatever is happening, wherever it's happening, however it's happening, with who is happening, I must have some sort of an input, I must have some sort of a say. And unfortunately, <coughs> This often realizes in more conflict than peace, in more problems than solutions, in more a situation where the Ummah becomes divided than united. One such time in the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. Now we do understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there had to be significance about this month of Rabi'ah al-Awwal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected Rabi'ah means spring the first spring the first signs of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects the month of Rabi'ah al-Awwal for the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so whether we celebrate or don't celebrate whether we believe or don't believe whether we part of the celebration or not part of the celebration, we all have to acknowledge that this month in the life of a mu'min in the calendar year is indeed a great year because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had selected this month for the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we said and we alluded to earlier, unfortunately instead of trying to find some common ground instead of trying to find something where we can all mutually coexist we use this month of Rabi'ah al-Awwal as we edge closer to what is more commonly known as the birth date of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to apply and to highlight and to show just how intellectually able we are in terms of why we celebrate the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and why we don't celebrate the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And through time, the errors of history will display and show that regardless of what type of discussion we're going to engage in, it doesn't result in anything. Actually, more often than not, it results in fragmentation, it results in division, it results in unnecessary hatred, and it results in that which is a fruitless solution and not that which is a fruitful solution. May Allah Jalla wa'ala grant us the understanding. So I thought we're coming closer to that date, which is the 12th of the Rabi'ul Awwal, which normally highlights the birth of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to some narrations. Why not speak about what we can do as a collective? And why not speak about what we as the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam need to be engaging in and how we as individuals within the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can become people who benefit mankind. Not necessarily people who divide mankind. On the day of Qiyamah, one of the things that Allah Jalla wa'ala will take us to task for, unfortunately, is because of the divisions that we've sowed within each other. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there exists a great possibility that Allah Jalla wa'ala will look at that individual who tried his or her level best in ensuring that the Ummah remained jointed and not disjointed and perhaps that might just be a means of the salvation of that individual and that is what we need to focus on and that is what I thought we'll drive inshallah today going forward. There's no doubt in the mind of every in any individual that Allah Jalla wa'ala has described in the Quran al Karim our purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ جِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have not created jinn, nor have we created mankind, except that they might worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they might find some sort of an Allah consciousness within them, and in essence draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So great is the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, commonalities, things that are supposed to keep us together. So great is the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah Jalla wa ala says to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to order his ummah قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you are truthful in claiming that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you are fulfilling your purpose and objective and your life mission فَاتَّبِعُونِي then follow the lifestyle of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuhbibukum Allah instead of becoming the individual who tries to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says I will become the lover and you will become the beloved so the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attached and linked to this particular purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is uh, the very basis and the very foundation <coughs> A person can never claim to be a true Muslim and a Muslim in totality if he doesn't have love for the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he doesn't have an absolute connection for the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this regard, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yu'minu ahadukum, none of us have believed, hatta yakuna hawahu tabi'an lima jiltubi until their base desires become subservient, until they start following that which I, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have brought. In another narration, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on one occasion is addressing Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he says to Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, O oh, Umar, a person will never be a true believer until and unless he loves me more than he loves his own self. Okay? So, Sahaba were individuals that were true in their nature. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I take all of creation, if I take the world and everything that it contains, uh, I can definitely say that I love you more than all of that, but I think I love myself more than I love you. 
And the Prophet said, no, 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 no. It has to get to a stage where you have to love me and become subservient to me and become that individual who emulates and imbibes and imbues within himself uh, the quality and the character <coughs> traits of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He pondered on this, he pondered on this for a while and then afterwards he says, Nabi of Allah, I thought about it, I've reflected and really <coughs> I've come to the conclusion that even more than my own self, I love you, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's quite unique to see uh, how the Ummah galvanized and how they were united around the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the first lesson for today. The ability to understand that the lifestyle of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're not talking about celebrating and we're not talking about not celebrating. We're not talking about whether the Mawlid is okay and whether the Mawlid is not okay. Because that discussion will continue till Qiyamah and will herald nothing as we said, but unfortunate uh, sadness and, and, and sometimes divisions and sometimes hatred. What we're talking about is how can we use the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to keep us focused? How can we use the sunnah and the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to once again become that united force? If we really look at the current situation in the world today, despite the fact that we <coughs> are a representation of the second largest religion in the world and the fastest growing religion in the world, where experts have predicted that by around about the year 2050, Islam will outweigh and will outnumber the amount of Christians too and will start surfacing as that which has the most amount of followers. Despite the fact that we have such a great amount of people and such a large number, the reason that the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is still weak is because the Ummah has failed to realize that their objective is to be united around the Sunnah and the teachings and the mannerisms and the lifestyle of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if anything, you know, we speak about how do we celebrate? We speak about, do we celebrate? Don't we celebrate? If anything, if any individual wants to acknowledge the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the greatest acknowledgement of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes from those individuals who are closest to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah speaks about them, that between them, they had love, they had goodness, they had understanding, they had support. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al Muslim al Muslim al Bunyan. They were, like a, they were like a building, they were like a fortress, they were like bricks to each other. When they galvanized and when they got together around the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah and around the life and the teachings of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the Ummah was a force to reckon with. So, as we said, in terms of if there's anything that we want to celebrate and if there's anything that we want to highlight and if there's anything that we want to talk about then we need to reflect you know a person says i i really love liverpool okay uh, but he's wearing a manchester united uh, support supporter kit you can't be saying that you love liverpool and you're wearing a united top you can't be saying subhanallah that you know you love cricket but you want to play soccer so when we subhanallah become those individuals who bring an environment in view within ourselves, that love for Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is only proof in following and in emulating the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the initial era and the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger, what were the teachings of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What was so great about the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an individual uh, and, and, and what, what was behind the wisdom, what, what, what were the wisdoms behind the teachings of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and how was it that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took people who the world did not want to govern and made them the governors of the world all over. What were the teachings of the life of the Prophet of Allah 
That's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. And if we really want to celebrate anything, then we need to look at how close are we to those teachings of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're not necessarily only talking about, you know, sometimes individuals think that celebrating the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means that I'm going to wear a, 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 a topi or I'm going to wear a kurta, I'm going to keep a beard. No, no, no. It's an all-encompassing nature of the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, in the initial era, in the initial period, 13 years of Nabu of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes through much difficulty in trying to establish an ummah, in trying to establish a fellowship of believers, in trying to establish that which subhanAllah can be a force to reckon with because he is unfortunately and so are the followers under the control of the individuals in Makkah. It's only when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets to Medina al munawwar then Islam really starts struggling. Then Islam really starts growing. And proof of this is found in the fact that in the Battle of Badr, after 13 years of the effort of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find some 311 or 313 men that are ready to defend Islam. <clears throat> and some two years later, in the Battle of Uhud, that number reaches almost so 13 years, brings about 300, and another two years later, because they acted as united force, uh, brings about another 400 and they, they reach an amount of 700. So what were these teachings from the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that made them the ummah that they were? And, and, and what was so unique about his style and his mannerisms uh, that really, subhanallah, made the ummah a force to be reckoned with? When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to Medina al munawwar so we're talking about celebrating his life, and we're talking about being a force to be reckoned with. That's what I thought I'll speak about today in terms of if there's anything that we want to celebrate, then we have to celebrate living the legacy of Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now what was the legacy? The initial period of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he settles in Medina al munawwara the first thing that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does when he gets to Medina al munawwara and this is something that we all need to take into serious consideration and be absolute and have no doubt about it to understand that only when we do things like these, the very first teachings, the foundation of Medina were the very first teachings of the Prophet of Allah And that resulted in Medina. That resulted in the Ummah eventually conquering the Qisra and, and, and Rome and the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. So when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa comes to Medina al our brothers and sisters, one of the greatest celebrations of the traditions of the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is the fact that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made every individual understand that every individual, regardless of the level of taqwa, regardless of the level of piety, regardless of the level of money, regardless of the level of or the status of the individual, Akhan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayn al muhajiri wal ansari. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sets about by establishing Medina in the following manner. He takes a Muhajir Sahabi and an Ansar Sahabi and he creates the fact of brotherhood. And so I, I, I guess the question that we need to ask ourselves is, those of us you know, who really claim to love the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how much of a contribution have we made to the Ummah, to our fellow brothers and sisters the world over? to make them understand that really and truly, I am your brother. So that's the first thing that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does. And in order for any society to function, in order for the masjid to function, in order for the maktab to function, in order for any organization to function, it requires, the, it requires individuals within the organization to work together towards one purpose. And we can only do that, subhanAllah, if we believe the man on my right, and the man on my left, and the man in front of me, and the man behind me is my brother. And the individual, subhanAllah, who is my brother, requires the same 
and that which I have, he should have. To the degree the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is not appropriate for a person to be called a believer حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ He drove this home. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he drove a message of brotherhood home. He made people understand that in order to be successful, the first step of success is to start existing as brothers to each other. The first step of success, and that which will result in some sort of power, is if only when and we as individuals start acting as brothers and support practice to each other. The second thing is, from amongst the, 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 the initial teachings of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I just thought I'd make mention of these two and then we'll conclude inshallah. So the first one was to make them understand that if there's something subhanallah that I want, then I must want it for my brother too. If there's something that I need, then I must need it for my brother too. If there's something that I love, then I must love it to my brother too. Subhanallah, never mind, and these were individuals that were existing with each other despite the fact that they shared no blood bond between each other. If we compare our example, those who claim to follow and to love the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we fall short in following that example with the very people who we share blood relations with. A man is not willing to make dua, Oh Allah, give my brother more than me. A man is not willing to ask his brother, do you need something? A man is not willing to, and in the days gone by, subhanAllah, there was never a situation, and that is why Islam succeeded. In the days gone by, there was never a time when if somebody was in need, another Muslim never rose to the occasion. And so, in order to celebrate the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what we need to do is to exist as a brotherhood. The teachings of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the very first and initial teachings, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches them, and he says, Afshu salam. How do you go about existing as a brotherhood? How do you go about becoming brothers of each other? So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't tell them, make salah. He didn't tell them, okay, now we're here in Islam and there's an Islamic state and there's a Khilafah. No, he didn't say that now you're going to start fasting more or you're going to give more zakah. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started with the very basics. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you want to become a force to be reckoned with, and if you want to celebrate the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then instead of only making salam Ramadan time, we need to extend those salams out of Ramadan. Afshu salam. The Prophet sallallahu said, make salam a custom amongst you. How many times do we walk past each other in the masjid? We're in the same masjid, same locality, we sing the brother every day. Yet we don't take a second or two out of our time to say assalamu alaikum. So afshu salam. The second teaching of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that ensured that Medina flourished, that ensured that Medina was powerful, that ensured that the ummah was the ummah to be reckoned with. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, And if there's anybody that needs food, and if there's anybody that's in need of something, then make sure you rise to the occasion. The third thing that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about, he said, Wasilul Arham. And if you look at these very basic teachings, none of them have to do with salah, none of them have to do with hajj, none of them have to do with zakah, none of them have to do with the rights of Allah. In establishing an ummah, in establishing a fellowship of believers, we can only be as strong as we want to and can be if we do for each other before we think about ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ said, Wasilu al-Arham and join ties. When people say, no, if he's good to me, I'll be good to him. The Prophet ﷺ says, no, 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 that's not what I should. Joining ties is, Silman qata'aka. Joining ties and establishing an ummah requires that you join ties and that we join ties with those individuals who sever ties with us. And if somebody does bad to us, we forgive them. This was the life of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a nutshell, Allah describes it in the following manner and he says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ You don't be good to people because people are good to you. In order for the ummah to exist, 
as a force, as a power. The greatest tradition of the, of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if you want to look at the yardstick for being good, then don't be good in terms of how people are good to you, be good in terms of how Allah is good to you. And then finally, after establishing the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says, وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ Now, go take time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ Perform salah at night. وَالنَّاسُ النِّيَامُ When people are sleeping, تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِالسَّلَامِ So in essence, and to just basically summarize once again, if we want to celebrate and we claim we individuals that love the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we need to look at the yardstick and that which the Prophet of Allah has set for us. What were those yardsticks and what were those measures? Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do we exist as a brotherhood? Do we take the man sitting next to me as a brother? You know, sometimes people say, even, you know, uh, uh, is it sunnah or when you, you know, sometimes some masjid you go to after salah, they greet each other. That's not a sunnah. We're not saying it's a sunnah and not a sunnah. But there's love and muhabbah and growth that takes place. It's forging that which is an ummah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first thing is to establish the ties, the ties of brotherhood of each other. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is not possible that a person can live and can desire something and he, and, and he doesn't wish it for his brother. And then he continued and he added, if you really want to be that person that establishes the ummah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and celebrates my life, then the very simple teachings are, become that person who makes salam. Become that person who gives food. Become that person who joins ties. Become that person who looks at the interest of the other individual. That is why the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in conclusion when he described the best believer. These individuals that existed side by side but the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were the best. Allah bears testimony to this. Why were they the best? They were the best because the Prophet of Allah said خَيْرٌ nas and فَعُهُمْ nas. In order to, to understand whether I'm a good Muslim or not you don't necessarily look at how much salah you're making. That's important. You don't look at how much zakah you're giving. That's also important. You don't look at how many hajjahs you did. That's also important. You look at the difference you're making in the life of another individual. Until I understand, subhanAllah, that we as individuals cannot live in our own cocoons. Cannot live selfishly. We have to live, we have to live selflessly for the interest of other individuals. Until that time comes, we will never ever see the glory of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that existed in the time of Sahaba and those that followed. May Allah Jalla wa Ala make us of those individuals these few small teachings who can bring it into our lives and may Allah Jalla wa Ala make it such that we become true lovers of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, we request all Muslims to kindly stand up and fill the gaps in front of them, inshallah.